Yes, uh, thank you very much. You, our audience, wherever you are, we want to talk about the Achieve Your Greatness seminar we had on the 30th of June of this month. Just last Friday, we had our guest of honor, guest speaker who came all the way from Cape Town, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we just want to discuss in terms of incest, the things that you we enjoyed and why you also must be part and parcel of this movement because we believe that you have greatness in you. Denzel Pedro Smith, welcome. Thank you again. Oh, uh, you know what, you're just making it much more difficult for me to leave <laughs> by welcoming me again. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks much. for that. And of course, I'm also joined with Fortson, who has uh, been with us for a very long period of time in terms of supporting this vision. Watson, welcome. Thank you, Blessing. Nice one here. Denzel, maybe let me start with you. Why do you think, or is it true that everyone is greatness? It is so true. Everyone is. I love it when, when, when you say achieving greatness and then ask me, <laughs> is it true that everyone has greatness? If you did not believe that everyone has, gre has greatness or the potential to be great, you wouldn't have encouraged them to come, come with us on this journey to achieve that greatness. So yes, it's true, my friend. Mm. It's true. Uh, my, my, my opinion is that, you know, some people say and believe that you have greatness within you. Mm -hmm. And they actually say, you know, bless him, you've got greatness within you. That's right. Uh, you've got greatness within you. Les Brown will say, you've got greatness within you. And <laughs> yeah. then they walk away. Without telling me, how do I get that greatness within me, was out of me. <laughs> or out of me, you know. I'm just messing around with it, within and with the, without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the key. How do, you, how do I get my greatness to the outside? Mm. So that I can also see how great I am. Excellent. And that's what I think you're doing, and you're doing well with this, with this project, with this vision of achieving your greatness. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And of course, what, what, what's your take about achieving your own greatness? What should someone do in order for them to realize that they actually do have greatness? I think first of all, really, is to, to believe in yourself. Mm. To believe in yourself that there is greatness inside mm. you. I think that's the first thing. Mm. Once you believe in yourself, um, it becomes so much easier. Then, as Daniel said, you now need to get it without you. Mm. You know, get it out. You go into practice. You go out there into maybe speaking. You go out there, you start practicing, or you start preaching if you want to preach. You know, that, that, that's mm. what I believe. Mm. And just, just if I may, please, just okay. to touch on the belief. It is so cool. Like I say, Let's use Les Brown. He's not here. We can gossip about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, says there's greatness within you. And he says it with so much conviction that, yes, oh my word, people become aware. And we become aware of a lot of things. But if we don't believe it, that's where it's going to end. And it's just awareness. Oh, there's greatness within me. Yeah, okay. The minute I believe it, and I believe it, not in a wishy-washy way where I believe I can fly. Mm. You don't even have wings, but you believe you can fly. <laughs> but, but you believe it from a place of conviction. Mm. Where, where I believe from a deep, embedded belief that will ultimately show in your behavior. Because if you believe it, you will behave it. So when I say I believe I've got greatness within me, it will start showing in my behavior. I start behave like someone who believes he's got greatness within him. And people will see your conduct, your behavior, your stature. Everything will, will change. You'll start working, operating with a mentality of greatness. Your level of excellence will rise. Your standards will rise. Because I believe there's more to me inside of me than what I have been showing in my behavior. Mm -hmm. So that belief is in it's, it's very important for us. Yeah. But also going back to your, um, to your concept that uh, one enemy of uh, great is good. That's good. See, yeah. Once you're good, you should still aim high. Yeah. You don't relax. 
You can't relate. Good enough has never been good enough. But but in circumstances like I was, especially in Zimbabwe, a lot of people have so many challenges. Mm -hmm. We talk about being able to put food on the table. It's actually a mammoth task for a, for, for, for a family to do that. Mm -hmm. How do you encourage someone who is down there in some rural place and they are saying, you know what, I also would love to achieve my own greatness. What should I do? Where can this person start? Oh man, it's a beautiful question. I love it. If we say there's greatness within you, we're talking about there is potential within all of us to achieve something great. So you start with yourself. There's a concept that says work with what you have. Work with what you have. What do you have in your hand was the question posed to a very great leader many years ago. When he said, I don't have the ability to speak, I stutter. Mm -hmm. me, me, what do you have in your hand? So use what you have. So the man in the rural area has got something. Something. Not a skill that he's got to learn. Not a job that he's got to learn how to do. There is something with him within him or her that they can use to generate an income that will put food on the table. And food is normally defined by your level of hunger. If you're very hungry, haven't eaten for days, one biscuit becomes food. But if you're not that hungry, you have eaten, then you work for, oh my word, I'm not that hungry. I'm not very urgent about generating money to get food. You see? So your, your, your hunger will determine how much you will use that which is within you to generate that income. That is nowhere. Because remember, nobody's going to come to you and say, Sir, I see your circumstances. Here is money. Here's a job. Nobody's going to come. So you've got to dig deep and become aware of who am I? What are my strengths? What do I have within me that I can use to generate income to put your proverbial food on the table? The mistake, the, the mistake we make, blessing, is if I say I want a chocolate cake, I'm going to bake a chocolate cake, and I look at the ingredients, what does it take? It takes eggs, flowers, and, and, and. Mm. And okay, let me rush off and go and get those ingredients. Only to find when you come from the shop, you open the cupboard, you say, oh my word, I already have eggs. So you're sitting with two loads of eggs. One of us is going to become redundant. You see? <laughs> yeah, so you've got to start with what you already have within you in terms of the ingredients. Work with that, start with that, and go and get the others later, which you need. So, so maybe, maybe Fordson, you have been working for over 15 years now, I think, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out from you, what would be your words of encouragement to a young man who possibly has graduated, and they're saying, you know what, I love, I want to achieve my own greatness in terms of my potential, I want to bring out the best out of myself, but possibly the environment is not allowing me to do that. What would be your words of encouragement? Yes, the, the environment may not allow, you know, there are a lot of challenges in the environment, but what you gotta do is um, uh, look at yourself, uh, look at what you can do, you know, regardless of the environment. If you're a graduate, you've graduated in uh, accounting, uh, whatever discipline, um, for you to improve, for you to become great, you gotta keep going back to those principles that you have learned. Try to get information. Try as much as possible to learn new things around whatever you know, you've you graduated in so that you don't become irrelevant. Because see, over time, you said I've been working for more than 15 years, but that, that's a long time. Mm. If you don't keep you know, improving yourself, uh, you always talk about uh, you know, your graph, Oh, mm. The segment curve comes up and then it'll be going down. Mm. You gotta create uh, points of inflection mm. on the on the graph. And how you do that, you need to keep abreast of 
what is going on around you in your profession, in your field, the new things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you can always be on an on upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, I wanted to find out from you, Denzel. Just before, before you find out quickly, I just found out something about circumstances while listening to you. You know your circumstances, when it's bad, when it's disturbing, might just be your best friend at times. Because yeah. mm -hmm. circumstances, will sometimes push you to find within you the ability to overcome mm. and rise above your circumstances. Have you ever been chased by a dog that you're very afraid of? Have you seen a guy? <laughs> and the circumstances, <laughs> if I don't run fast enough, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I don't run fast, as fast as I've never run before, mm. <laughs> I'm going to die. That's and then, secondly, sometimes as if I do not jump over a fence that I've never jumped over before, yeah. I'm going to die. Mm. And you find that I jump and I run faster and higher than what I've ever done before because of the circumstances. Oh. If the dog has never chased me, I don't have, I don't have to jump that high. Mm. I don't have to run that fast. Mm. See circumstances you don't even know how. As, a, as a catalyst mm. Yeah. Mm. to bring out the best in you. Excellent. Excellent. And of course, on Friday night, Denzel is talking yes. about, uh, I think, the power of association. Mm. And you, you, you tweaked it with tax. You know, if you want to fly, you don't have to hang around yeah, no. with ducks. Eagles don't hang around with ducks. Explain more of that. You see, the thing is, the, if, you, if, you, if you're a duck, you behave like a duck, you do what the ducks do, you go where the ducks do, and you will be just another duck. If you want to soar like an eagle, you cannot associate with ducks. Ducks talk ducks language. Ducks behave like ducks. Eagles behave like eagles. They have a different standard, a different language, a different form of behavior. Eagles fly higher than any other bird. Ducks Fly. Have you ever seen an eagle in a flock? You don't get a flock of eagles, you get a bunch of a flock of ducks, yeah, or whatever. You know, they bunch, they bunch. Eagles go alone. Mm. They're courageous. Mm. They, they, they kind of go the eagle way. <laughs> it's just, I'm just a duck. In fact, they kill ducks for anniversaries and whatever, they never kill an eagle to eat and celebrate. Eagles are, eagles are just eagles, man. So what I'm saying is, choose your friends. Choose your friends, choose your associates. If you wanna grow, find people that will stretch you, that will encourage you to grow. For example, if we are a group, if we are a team, if I am the sharpest in this team here, yeah, it means I will never be able to learn from you, but you will be coming to me all the time and drain and exhaust me. Mm. So find yourself people that's always growing with you, mm. always growing ahead of you that you can learn from. Mm. Mm -hmm. The minute you become the sharpest knife in the drawer, before you know it, you become useless because you'll be blunt mm. and there'll be no one to sharpen you. Mm. So get away from the ducks if you want to be a eagle. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Impressive. Right. Well, maybe as we round off this conversation, we had a request from a champion. Yes. Who was one of our speakers on the day. We Mr. Productive. Had, yes. Okay. And we also had Arta Marara, mm -hmm. who spoke on um, Prosper or Die Poor. Okay, two points on Prosper or Die Poor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and also we had uh, Cynthia. Cynthia, yes. They all delivered, I think, great presentations which mm -hmm. helped a lot of people to remove a lot of scales from their eyes. Yes. When we look at what's going on in our country and with these speakers, speaking such kind of messages, what would you say to them in terms of, you know, keeping on doing this type of work? Because remember, you know, especially in motivational speaking in Zimbabwe, a lot of people do not necessarily see the value or the importance of this work. And mm -hmm. even for them to part with a couple of dollars, say, I'm going for a motivational seminar or for a self-development seminar, 
we are not yet there as opposed to these other modern countries, so to speak. What is your encouragement to all these speakers in Zimbabwe, even those that I may not necessarily have mentioned, mm -hmm. but they are still also in this type of work, inspiring people, challenging people to follow their dreams? What's your words of encouragement to them? Firstly, I and then just start by saying speakers in, in Zimbabwe or wherever you are turn your eyes away from the other, other countries in terms of where they are we are where we are so number one we're going to continue to lead from where we are that's the one thing do not compare do, don't ever compare because remember you're speaking from a place of where you are in terms of your need, your experiences, and the impact that you can make. That's the first thing. Don't compare, I want to be like a whatever. Keep on speaking here. Yeah. Secondly, oh, and this is, this is vast, don't ever think that your message has been spoken in vain. Never, never. And sometimes we think that the reaction of the audience is a true indication of how impactful our message is. We shouldn't kid ourselves, it's not, it's not. Whether you know it then, or whether you come to know about it later, your message is finding a home and lives are being changed. Keep on, and that is the thing, we've got to keep on keeping on, even though we don't see results immediately. You'll be surprised how aware people are about this kind of, and the need for this kind of conversations to be happening in Zimbabwe. Yeah, you'll be surprised. People listen and they go back. Allow me to share a, a little story that I got, and I was here on one Friday night, and I got this message this afternoon on my phone. And it blew me away. Just, just to, just, just for the speakers who were there mm. to encourage them. And this message came about not even, huh, not even an hour ago. Hello, sir. My name is so and so. I met you at Cresto Oasis. There's some free publicity and marketing for Cresto on at the seminar on Friday night. I would like to follow your articles. I'm a young person of a certain age and I'm studying at the University of Zimbabwe. Now I have my own story, that person says, and I want to be vulnerable to you because your presentation touched my heart. And I'm saying this not to impress anybody but to impress upon these speakers that sometimes we think our message or our presentation is ah, it's a waste of time. Don't be fooled. Keep on keeping on. Somebody out there need your story. Somebody out there needs your message. Somebody out there needs your hope that you're presenting through your presentation. Because the world, on the whole, needs solutions. They need hope. And they need to hear it from people who know and who now shows that it can be done. Mm. Mm. Wise words. Wise words. But before we possibly run off, uh, Fortson, do you have um, your last words? Maybe that you want to say to most people who listen to and watching this video. Look, certainly, um, the, the seminar that we had on Friday was very powerful. Thank you very much Absolutely. for that. Um, the other speakers are not here, but I think I should also you know, thank them. Uh, they had powerful messages. Mm. I mean, Arthur came in with, uh, you know, Led Rover plus Len Cruiser plus Led <laughs> 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 Yes, yes, yes amazing. Yeah. Messages that yes. came through. Mm. So, it was indeed uh, worthwhile, mm -hmm. and thanks, blessing for for arranging that. Oh yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes. Well done. Bless you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful moment, wonderful time with Denzel Pedros, meet all the way from Cape Town, and of course, 
my friend here and colleague Fordson. We look forward to meeting you again on the 27th of October where we are going to host another Achieve Your Greatness seminar empowered to empower you for your own greatness and this is blessing speaks see you at the top thank you hey bye bye for now ah, great thank stuff you. gentlemen great stuff wonderful oh. yeah, yeah, yeah nice one nice <laughs> awesome good stuff